Hi. My mom is 81 and she's having trouble walking, taking care of herself. There are expectations. You gotta kind of shut down your emotion and just do what needs to be done. I love my mom, but I, I need some help. I get bladder leaks. I didn't want to feel like I was wearing the pads I wore when I was 12. Then I tried the always discreet pads. They fit perfectly in the place they're supposed to. Look how much it holds. And it still stays thin. It's the protection we deserve. Monday, our Demi Lovato exclusive after a near fatal overdose, how she's turning her life around. I've really figured out who I am. Plus, Chef Bobby Flay gets grilled by his daughter, Sophie. Oh, I mean, oh my look, we're spilling tea. Oh, spill all that tea. Yeah. Okay, now listen, before we go, Annalie Ashford transformed into Paula Jones for Impeachment American Crime Story. But Happening now. Is San Antonio's sizzling hot housing market beginning to cool off? Coming up, what buyers and sellers can expect. And a 19-year-old taken into custody by federal authorities after making terroristic threats. What he posted on social media that got him in trouble and the conservative student organization he was targeting. Next. And in just a bit, we'll take a fresh look at the radar, see who's seen the shower activity this afternoon, talk about rain chances through the weekend, and when better rain chances come back into the picture. News at 5 starts right now. First at five, we begin with our red hot housing market, or at least it used to be. There are growing signs that it may be losing a little sizzle. In fact, we may be heading back to pre-pandemic norms. But that could be good for new buyers who have weathered months of bidding wars. As 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris reports, mortgage rates and high prices are keeping some buyers out of the game. It's gorgeous. An acre of land, gorgeous backyard, and no bidding war. It was smooth buying for Alyssa Matsuzaki and her husband. Our offer wasn't too aggressive. It was within our budget, but was appealing enough to be accepted. When it comes to the housing market, competition is cooling. Realtor Monique Cardenas says buyer frenzy is, is calming. They're not just getting any house and going 30000 over asking price anymore. Uh, but homes are still selling. Just in shrinking numbers. More than 3,300 existing homes sold in July. That's a 15% drop from one year ago and the fourth year-over-year -year drop in a row. So why the cool down? Well, economists say it comes down to concerns about inflation and affordability. While the number of sales is down, the prices are not. The median price of homes sold last month was $340,000, a 15% bump over last year. But there are signs the price jumps are easing up and mortgage rates are sidelining some buyers. Now about 5% for a 30 year fixed rate, roughly double what it was a year ago. But as Cardenas says, we're just getting back to pre-pandemic norms. Where we were in a red hot market, we are just in a hot market. And that's just the way I kind of you know, explain it to the sellers is we need a price at value, not over value anymore. After buying their dream home, the Matsuzakis needed to sell their old home fast. They did even over asking price, proving it's still a seller's market. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. New at five, a San Antonio teen facing charges after he threatened mass violence at a conservative student conference in Florida last month. His name is Alejandro Velasquez Gomez. He is a recent graduate of Wagner High School. According to the FBI San Antonio Division of the Joint Terrorism Task Force, Velasquez posted the threat on Instagram back on July 18th. It threatened revenge on July 22nd, possibly at a student action summit in Tampa. Investigators confirmed Velasquez had a flight scheduled to Tampa on July 22nd, but he canceled it the night before. During the investigation, Velasquez's phone was searched and images of child pornography were reportedly found. He now faces charges for those images and the threats. A Bear County grand jury handing down a murder indictment this week. Kenneth Harden is facing a murder charge for the shooting death of Darian Dixon. Dixon died in April on April 27th after he was shot at the Vista Del Rey apartments on Evers Road. Officers arrived to find him responsive. He identified the shooter as Kenny before he died. If convicted, Harden faces five to 99 years or life in prison. We are still working to learn the name of a robbery suspect who was shot and killed on Calabra Road overnight. It happened in a parking lot near Ingram. San Antonio police say a man was on his way to his apartment when he noticed a Prius circling the parking lot. 
He says three men got out and tried to rob him. Instead of handing his stuff over, though, he pulled out his own gun and shot one of the suspects in the neck. That man died at University Hospital. The other two got away. The victim is not facing charges. A daycare worker caught on camera slapping a child with a severe intellectual disability and then pulling her across the floor of a school bus by her ankle. A warning, the video you're about to see is disturbing. That incident happened in late April outside Mary's Little Lambs, a daycare facility in shirts. The footage shows the woman get on board the bus and then slap the 13 year old girl in the face before grabbing her by the ankle and dragging her toward the steps to exit the bus. The girl who has a chromosome disorder was forced to walk across the pavement barefoot. Her mother said the video is her worst fear becoming a reality. She can't come home and verbalize to us what her day has been, what has gone on. So, I mean, it's an everyday battle for us. The suspect seen in this footage will not be criminally charged, but the facility was heavily cited by state child care investigators because of this incident. Coming up at 6 o'clock, what those sanctions look like and what happened to that woman's job. The Justice Department in a time crunch. It must try to redact parts of the affidavit that gave the green light to the FBI's raid on former President Donald Trump's home and do so before next Thursday. That's the deadline to present their proposal to the judge, who will then decide how much of the document will be released. ABC's Rin Shaw has more. The federal magistrate overseeing the court case brought by members of the media looking to unseal the affidavit used to justify the FBI raid on former President Trump's Florida estate has indicated he's leaning towards making at least some of the document public. It is his job as the gatekeeper in this case to perform his function of balancing the interest in the public of accessing these materials against the interest in the government in keeping them secret. The judge heard competing arguments on Thursday from lawyers representing media companies, including ABC News and the Department of Justice. The DOJ fears the release might compromise national security and say they are very concerned about the safety of the witnesses. These affidavits can be very lengthy and they can contain, they do contain very sensitive information. But the lawyer representing the media rejected the DOJ's position. But it is not the government's job to tell the public what is meaningful in terms of the release of its own information. The federal judge, who used to be a former prosecutor, says the process of what to make public will be a careful one. And he is allowing the DOJ until next Thursday to send him their proposed redactions. The judge says if he doesn't think the government government has revealed enough of the affidavit, he will add his own proposed edits on what he thinks should be made public, which the department can then appeal. There are still going to be many, many portions, almost all of it. I, I would think that the government is going to want to keep secret uh, for now. Former President Donald Trump publicly said he wants the affidavit revealed, but his legal team did not take that position when they were in court. And that means Trump will learn what ultimately gets revealed the same time as the rest of the public. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Washington. An update now on the war in Ukraine. Fears are growing regarding the possibility of an attack at Europe's largest nuclear power plant located in Ukraine. Shelling has been intensifying there for days. This video shows projectiles landing and exploding nearby. Officials with the UN are urging the area to be demilitarized. At last check, satellite images show no significant signs of damage at the plant, but there is fear there could be a radioactive leak at some point. Meantime, the U.S. is sending more aid to Ukraine. Today, the Department of Defense announced plans to give $775 million of additional military assistance. That includes more ammunition for artillery rocket systems as well as mine clearing equipment. This new aid package brings the total amount of aid to Ukraine to nearly $11 billion. In your health headlines, two people have died after eating raw oysters in Florida. The Associated Press reporting those oysters were sourced from Louisiana. The deaths linked to a bacteria called Vibrio, which doesn't change the way the oyster looks, smells, or tastes. The CDC says about 80,000 people get fibrosis in the U.S. every year, and about 100 people die from it. You can read more about this story right now on KSAT.com.
With school safety on top of everyone's mind, this year Somerset ISD has a new program to keep kids safe even before they step foot on campus. It is a school bus tracking system that involves students swiping an ID card before getting on and off the bus and parents tracking their student using an app. Sometimes parents work out of Somerset area, so they're able to keep track. Okay, my child has uh, arrived at the campus, so you know they they have peace of mind that they've made it to the campus. It provides a photo of the student, so there's no problem where someone else swiped the uh, incorrect card or somebody else's card. Um, they're able to make that connection. Okay, this person is the correct person. This is the person that I am going to drop off at this address. Now we're told that same program can be used during field trips and when students are commuting to and from athletic events. Somerset ISD's first day of school is on Monday. It's already move in day at Trinity University. First year students and their families spending the day getting situated on campus before fall semesters. The fall semester begins college move in day exciting on its own, but Trinity President Vanessa Beasley tells us they're looking forward to what this incoming class has to offer. She says it's the most diverse in the university's history. Classes begin on Monday. Take a quick look at your Friday evening commute as you head into the weekend. Looking here at 410 and Bandera Road. No trouble to report there. Just a little slowdown as folks are getting off the road there. Adam. You know, Tim, we have plenty of cloud cover across our area right now, even locally, kind of like yesterday. The low clouds look like it could rain, but nothing on the radar anywhere near San Antonio. And the lingering showers that are left over are basically closer to Austin. That's all we have. As we go through the evening, there's still the off chance of a stray shower developing. I give it a 10 to 20% chance. Generally, generally dry, I think, the rest of the evening and tonight. By 10 o'clock, 84 degrees. Midnight will be near 81. Humid in a southeasterly wind at 10 to 15. Right now in Del Rio, 100 degrees, but check this out in Lakey. Joanne's backyard, three and a half inches of rain from the showers and storms that developed last night into this morning. I have an update. On this activity in the Gulf, we're watching that as it heads towards Texas. We'll see if that's going to bring us some rain in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. It is definitely no secret that uh, Texas is facing extreme drought, and it is actually the worst we've seen since 2011. If you're curious about what's causing it and what some of the implications are so far, we answer those questions in an article on our website. You can see it now. It's on the homepage. Just go to ksat.com. Still ahead on the news at five, are you an Apple user? Well, you wanna get out your devices and install the latest update. There is a security threat that could compromise your data. We'll tell you more about what you're protecting yourself from when we come back. Myra Arthur here, joining you from the KSAT 12 newsroom this evening. Coming up tonight at six, the accusation is voting alongside Democrats. And as a result, the local Republican Party discussed possibly censuring Senator John Cornyn and Congressman Tony Gonzalez. It didn't happen, at least not yet. Garrett Berger sat down with the county chairman, who tells us why it is still a possibility. Plus, booming business. There are new businesses ready to call the east side home. RJ Marquez speaks with a local small business owner about the changes in that part of San Antonio and what it means for people who plan to live and work there in the future. And among the first to earn the Congressional Medal of Honor, a Texan born a slave and later freed by his father. Jesse DeGoyado tells us why a St. Mary's University student learned about his life and heroism during the Civil War. Those stories and more tonight on the News at 6. Have any Apple devices you want to listen up? The company issuing a dire warning saying they are vulnerable to hackers capable of taking over your device. But there is a fix. Isabel Rosales tells us what a cybersecurity expert says you should do. Update your devices right now. That's Apple's urgent warning after discovering a vulnerability in its operating systems. What does this all mean? I mean, among vulnerabilities in the computer world, it, it's it's pretty severe. On a scale of one to ten, it's you know it's an eight or a nine. When Roger Grimes, a cybersecurity pro with three decades working at companies like McAfee and Microsoft, tells you to pay attention, you listen. It's a pretty big, severe vulnerability. At its core, Apple's security flaw could allow a hacker to take full admin access of your iPhone, iPad, and Mac. They can inject and install more malicious software. They can read your data. They can send you know people that you trust. They can send emails and messages and even calls uh, seeming to be from you. 
The tech giant says the flaw may have been actively exploited and is present in many products, including iPhones as old as 6S. How common in the cybersecurity world is it to have a large company such as Apple admit to this type of security flaw? You know, it's not uncommon. And the reality is that we're, we're you know, it's always been this way. Apple is already offering this emergency software update. Grimes warns, don't ignore it. There will always be some you know, percentage of people, 10, 15 percent of people that will be very late in patching and be susceptible to this. And in the meantime, be wary of any unusual messages, even from friends asking you to download or click anything. It'd be a good practice for everybody to get a healthy culture of skepticism. I'm Isabel Rosales reporting. Looking outside with live cam. Cloudy out there, the torch of friendship right there in downtown San Antonio. We were hoping for a little rain. It looks like it outside. We have the low clouds, but really not much moisture over the Alamo City right now. One shower just flared up on the far west side. And let's get right to that actually and take a look at the radar. We have a lot to talk about and we look at the radar. Well, not a lot to talk about in terms of the radar, but in terms of what's happened in the Gulf and rain chances in the days ahead. Two outflow boundaries were coming together northeast of town. You can see these green lines colliding near San Marcos, New Braunfels, even Garden Ridge. I was anticipating some development along those, but they're just having a hard time mustering up any showers. But then you go to the far west side of town, and that's where we have one downpour right along Highway 90 and 1604. One downpour, one lonely little downpour there on the far west side and one shower West Military Drive and Highway 90 south of Highway 90 there just west of Lackland Air Force Base. This should be pretty short lived. There is the opportunity for a few more isolated showers in the hours ahead, but highly isolated and generally I think will be dry. OK, the newest drought monitor is in 93% of Texas is considered in drought and that's a 4% improvement compared to last week, especially in deep south Texas down near the valley. We saw the best improvements from that tropical moisture that hit over the weekend and earlier this week. Locally, we're still in that exceptional drought. However, look what fired up last night in particularly Lakey area and over toward Bandera County and even Edwards County. This was nice to see good soaking heavy rain on the order of three plus inches last night and early this morning uh, from that complex that flared up and organized and then a few spotty showers elsewhere from Bandera in to Bernie all the way up toward Blanco and Austin today. As I said before, though, not much on the radar screen right now around us. Just that one little downpour at 1604 and Highway 90 on the city's far west side. More rain for drought stricken Houston as well. It cashed in today, but I want to focus on this area of development in the Bay of Campeche, the far southern Gulf of Mexico. This is that same little area of disturbed weather that we've been talking about for several days when it was near Nicaragua. Now it's emerged into the Gulf of Mexico. This is moving to the northwest and the Hurricane Center has updated it to a 70% chance of developing into an organized tropical system. So that would mean a tropical depression maybe even a tropical storm. It still has some real estate to travel over before it turns into north northern Mexico. But regardless, it doesn't look like this is going to sh throw any showers our way. Even spaghetti plots show this passing basically just south of Brownsville and South Padre Island. I do think it'll throw some showers to South Padre Island, Laguna, Laguna Madre, all the way up to Corpus Christi and Port Aransas periodically this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, but the bulk of the moisture, unfortunately, veering away from us. However, we look on into next week and we boost the rain chances again into the scattered category Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday as some heavy downpours are likely to develop, not for everybody, but some good heavy tropical soakers with the shift in our weather pattern next week. We'll be fine tuning the details as there's still some uncertainty on exactly where and when, but at least it's looking promising into next week. 97, our high temperature today, that's one degree above average, the record 108. 101 right now in Catula. Eagle Pass that tri triple digits, but Kerrville 85. Austin's in the 70s with the rain. 82 Bernie, 83 Canyon Lake. You can see where we've had the outflow boundaries, some clouds and even some areas of rain. Meanwhile, Hondo still at 94. Tomorrow we start the day at 76, make it up to 96 for the high temperature. A mixture of sun and clouds, but overall a pretty quiet Saturday and generally dry all weekend long. 10% chance Saturday. 
a 20% chance on Sunday, and then we boost those odds again to at least 40% toward the middle of next week. And look what happens to the high temperatures. A little under 90 at that point, huh? Mm. Wow, I haven't seen that in a long time. Thanks, Adam. All right, Greg, the UTSA Roadrunners had one heck of a season last year. Sure. Ready to do it all again? Yeah, they're hoping that's the case. And remember now, the high school football season starts next week. The college football season the following week. Are the Roadrunners more than ready to try and top what they did last year? That'll be tough to do. 12-2 and two school record finish. And also, our big game coverage previews are handed to Bronco Country and Brandeis coming up. Camping with KZAN, powered by Davis Law Firm. Seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady's return to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is now up in the air. Head coach Todd Bowles did not give a specific return date today when questioned about Brady coming back to the team, despite the fact Bowles said they discussed his departure to attend to personal things before training camp began. According to Bowles, Brady would return after this Saturday's preseason game, meaning he would be back with the team on Monday after departing on August the 11th, but Bowles declined to give a specific date today. The Dallas Cowboys are set to open their regular season against Tampa Bay on Sunday night football on September the 11th. The former starting quarterback for the Texas Longhorns, Casey Thompson, has been named the starting quarterback for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Thompson, who started 10 games for the Longhorns last year and led the Big 12 with 24 touchdowns while throwing for over 2,000 yards, transferred to Nebraska, where he will start against Northwestern overseas in Ireland next week. Quinn Hewers named the new starter for Texas. The UTSA Roadrunners are winding down their fall camp of the season set to kick off now in two weeks from this Saturday against number 24 Houston in the Alamo Dome. After playing in 13 games last season, starting 12 inside linebacker Trevor Harmison is ready to start his redshirt senior season on defense. And for Harmison and his teammates, the anticipation of coming off the best season in school history and defending their conference USA title, they can't wait. I know for myself, I can't sleep at night just thinking about the season and all like the, the potential. Uh, and I, I know uh, the guys can't wait either. So we're just trying to hold it in to game day. All right, kickoff in the Alamo Dome in two weeks. For Saturday, it's set for 2.30. Our big game coverage previews take us to Brandeis High School, which is Bronco country. After going five and three in that difficult district, 28-6A and finishing seven to four as division two by district finest head coach Charles Bruce welcomes back five starters, three on offense, two on defense. One of the starters coming back on offense is quarterback J.C. Evans, who stands six foot five, had nine touchdowns last year in the air, three on the ground after coming back from injuries on defense as Braden Zingelman is back after his six sack performance. Definitely last year, thinking back, on how we finish and a lot of us that played last year were definitely unhappy with how we finished and we were ready to come back this year and take it all the way. We've been working all summer and I feel like this we got a scrimmage in a couple weeks and I feel like that's what we're gonna show what we can really do and then O'Connor the next week in the Alamo Dome. Just been excited for that, waiting for that for a while now. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be part of that big weekend for us, too. The Brandeis Broncos kick off their season one week from tonight in the Alamo Dome against O'Connor at 7 p.m. And then, of course, it's the KSAP Pigskin Classic 2022 the following day, which is a triple header in the Alamo Dome. We're ready. We hope so, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Before we go, we want to let you know about a situation that's happening right now at Ingram Park Mall. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says a suspect involved in a chase may have run into the mall. Right now they're asking anyone who encounters suspicious activity to call their office. Their number 210-335-6000. We have a crew at the scene. We'll update you at 6. World News is next.